one of the craziest stories. Good morning. Good evening, family. Welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. I hope that you can hear me real well. I've been having some audio issues, but nevertheless, we're going to give it a shot. As a lot of y'all know, I've been absent for a few days, actually um, following and trying to be available um, to the Robinson Scarborough family um, regarding Sade. Um, there still are a lot of unanswered questions. Of course, y'all know that. But this right here is something that I feel like I just want to share with the family. And, um, you know, y'all leave y'all opinions down below what you think and uh, keep praying for us here okay the search for Sade Robinson remains continues in Milwaukee while key questions case of a case linger um, the suspect of course uh, he wants a trial okay so, it's been over three weeks since Sade went missing and was later found to be killed and dismembered. In the time since, suspect Maxwell Anderson pleaded not guilty to the charges and asked to go to trial. Prosecutors believe that Anderson met Robinson for a date on April 1st and then killed and mutilated her. Body parts believed to belong to Robinson have been found at various locations around Milwaukee County after she was reported missing. Now, uh, blood was found at Anderson's home, but that doesn't even match Robinson's DNA. Anderson is going to remain in custody. Remain in custody. I um. I'm in touch with the fifth district, fifth district police station, and I suggested to them that they check a park that's located not too far from me, um, and it's called Kern Park. Uh, people said that he drove around. The GPS stated that he drove around um, Humboldt. Um, on the east side, River West area, and they don't have an explanation for it. Well, I do. He probably was throwing body parts out over there. It just doesn't seem that the police want a lot of uh, help, even though they always say if you got any leads, uh, inform the police. The police want to do what they want to do. Okay, they they don't really want your help. Um, this is a narcissistic into in organization who wants to do the things they want to do, and they really find it offensive when civilians help solve cases, um, even though they act as if that's not the case. Okay, because I have yet to have somebody return the phone call about why they won't search Kern Park uh, to me it would seem obvious if he's throwing body parts away at different parks what would he's drove past this park he got no business even over here why other what other reason would he be over here okay so to me and my people it's a no, a no brainer okay that's another park that I would check. Well, and it's another park that the family is going to have to go and check. Um, 
Anyway, before she was killed, the 19-year-old Robinson was set to graduate, y'all know that, from MATC with a degree in criminal justice and was mulling joining the Air Force. She had worked at the East Side Eatery Pizza Shuttle for oh, three years where she was a customer service uh, she was just she was a customer favorite. I'll just say it like that. Um, they have started a GoFundMe to cover memorial services and other necessities for the family. As the case and investigation continue, questions continue to linger. The Journal Sentinel asked them to stop to top law enforcement officials involved in the case before Milwaukee County Justice Council event last week. Um, here's the latest on the case and in the investigation. The search for Sade continues as criticism questions of police mount. I, I, I know. I know. Community members and Robinson's family have been very outspoken in the criticism um, and of their investigation into the case. We haven't gotten any more information. Among the criticisms is that early on, community members found a blanket of Sade's in the area that police had already searched and that, so far, many of her remains have been located by community members. We we find that ultra insulting that we plan to pay in the police department. We have to pay taxes just as well for these people who kill us. We're paying a police department who don't really care when black girls come up missing. They really don't. And don't say you got a black deputy, don't, I mean, a black sheriff or a black police chief. The program is in place. They just functionary puppets, fulfilling a role. Last week, James Burnett, the Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office, publicly public information officer, he said that the search is ongoing. It's consistent, it's constant, and it's daily. On Wednesday, Sheriff Danita Ball told the Journal Sentinel that the department is still conducting searches but couldn't provide further detail. She said the department is dotting our I's and crossing our T's. Now, I do know that the police chief, Jeff Norman, uh, well, let me go back to the article. We've gone back to some of the places that we've searched before just to make sure that they were not leaving any stones unturned, she said. Yeah, Danita. The same day, Milwaukee Police Chief Jeffrey Norman said it's an ongoing case and we still have an active investigation. I know that we're not letting any particular evidence not be searched for. So we have an ongoing looking at not only searching for other witnesses, anything that might help us further the investigation along. Yeah, right. Okay. Like I said, bring your asses on down here to Kern Park. Let's start looking over here. On Monday, it was announced that blood found in Anderson, of course, was not Robinson's. And that was a week ago. Uh, the criminal complaint against Anderson initially said blood found throughout his home on bedding, in the bedroom, on a stairwell, all um, were uh, unidentified. And there was also blood in the unspecified location the complaint didn't say the blood was Robinson's but the mention made Liddy, uh, led many to believe that that was the case 
uh, on Monday, this is last Monday, the complaint was amended with this footnote. The complaint knows that preliminary testing of blood was done by the Wisconsin State Crime Lab and that the preliminary DNA analysis supports the conclusion that there is no support for inclusion of Robinson's DNA in any of the blood or the swabs tested. And for some of those swabs, Robinson's DNA is excluded. You see how they go through all of this round dog and pony show just to get to the point. You, 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 you see how manip, mas, master manipulators operate. They can't give you a straight answer, but they always want you to give them a straight answer. I mean, it's, it's, it's just so insidious, you know. Boss uh, said that the sheriff's office doesn't have any information about who the blood belongs to. Um, I will say this. Uh, Jeffrey Norman is also an attorney. So I'm more in line to um, kind of listen to some of the things that he says because it just may be a situation where he's wanting to make sure as an attorney they don't do anything to get the case thrown out. And I can I can chief for that. Anyway, it indicates that preliminary DNA supports the conclusion that there has been no support for the inclusion of her blood that was on the walls and stuff. A significant amount of blood was found in Maxwell's house. Now, ask why the mention of the blood was included in a complaint when it was not known to be Robinson. Danita said, because we didn't know where she was killed. And there was significant, there was a significant amount of blood. So we wanted to make sure our basis was recovered. Listen. If they found her belongings in the trunk that didn't get burnt out in the fire when he set her car on fire, what in the hell would make you think that he didn't kill her in the car? Remember, it's burnt up. Her, her phone, uh, other belongings, her clothes, these were all found in her trunk but the car was burnt out common sense tells me that she possibly may have been burnt up in the car that's not uh, far fetched for anybody to reason asked whether how it was framed in the com in the com complaint was normal she responded, there's nothing normal about this investigation. She wouldn't provide any further detail, though. Um, Sheriff said there's no reason to believe there are other victims. Really? And y'all know we just went over a young lady that went to school with Sade that also worked at Pizza Hut who has been missing. Okay, but somehow they have no reason to believe there are other victims. You find more blood in the house, it doesn't belong to Sade, but you don't think there are other victims. And you haven't said that the blood belongs to Anderson. So who the hell's blood is it? See, y'all on some bullshit crap. The announcement that the blood was not Robinson has raised the question of who it belonged to. Ball said that the office has no reason to believe at this time that there are other uh, victims, but it will continue to investigate. Investigate what? If you don't believe it's nobody else. Anyway. We're still investigating just to make sure that we haven't missed anything. Y'all missed a lot. 
The office is still waiting for results from other remains found to determine if they are Robinson's. <sighs> okay. Uh, community members have said that Anderson's father, Stephen Anderson, has been at his son's home on the south side, took photos that show a man appearing to remove items from the property last week. Y'all see this? His father has been in a home removing items. The journal sentinel was unable to identify the man and attempts to reach his father have been unsuccessful. His ass needs to be charged too. He went into the house and left stuff and he's allowed to do this ball said there would be nothing wrong with Andrew's father entering the home once it was released as a crime scene anyone that he allowed in the home can enter the home on thursday to see 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 they not treating this as if this is a serial situation they don't give up that I mean, I bet if it was my black ass and my daddy went into the house and removed items, y'all think they would let him get away with that? Sure. On th Thursday, Burnett said that at no point, aside from when the house was being searched uh, by a warrant, on two occasions was the home closed off to Anderson's family. He said that there was no concern for the sanctity of any evidence in the home being affected by it not closed, by it not being closed off. <laughs> Everything they, this investigator, sought, when they sought it, they got it. There should be an additional need then they'll submit another warrant. Asked if the home was considered a crime scene, Burnett said, oh, that's an interesting question. I'm not going to see that. The home is part of this criminal investigation. I know you're not, because you're letting people go in and remove shit. Anderson's father released a statement addressing Robinson's family. On behalf of my self and my family, I would like to express our deepest sympathy and heartfelt condolences to the family and loved ones of Sade. We are shocked and devastated by her senseless death. That's what he wrote in the statement. Um, from the attorney represent him. Stephen Anderson ended the statement by asking the media to respect his family's privacy. <sighs> you created a serial psychopath who has destroyed the best of among us and you want some damn privacy as you while you go in and remove evidence. I just tell y'all, y'all, I got a bad feeling. I got a bad feeling. Okay, but I want to know what y'all think. Because I can go on. You tell me what you think. What you think about this man going into the house? What, what type of keystone crazy investigation? Is this turning out to be? Again, the most disrespected woman on the planet Earth is the black woman, the black girl, the black teen. Uh, leave your comments below. If you like what you hear, please like, share, subscribe. 
And uh, I'm going to see y'all in the next video. As y'all know, this story has gotten me so re-traumatized. It's just Jeffrey Dahmer all over again. And nobody seems to give a fuck. Excuse my French, but I'll see you in the next video.